a lot of scientists around the world that want to see their materials used. They would love nothing more for other scientists to take them off in new and fantastic directions. But until we have standardised agreements that allow scientists to do that, then it's difficult and we see that grit exists now in science. Collaboration isn't just a risk, but it's actually an opportunity as well. And of course you've got to balance risks and think about them, but the opportunity might greatly outweigh the risks that are often protected against by corporate lawyers and so on. If you are in a well enough resource laboratory, you can bypass the entire material transfer agreement process simply by having everything you need synthesized. And that solves the problem for very well resourced laboratories. It doesn't solve the problem for laboratories that are less well resourced. Without the Open NTA, smaller players are having to license those materials, either from other companies or potentially from university tech transfer offices. Each of those agreements imposes a very large transactional cost, if not a financial cost. What we need to be sure is that we are able to publish the results of what we do and ideally to use those results further either with collaborators um, or to commercialise. Those terms aren't always given when we receive materials from elsewhere and can actually be quite restrictive to us and hamper what we actually want to do with our science. The Open MTA would allow you to exchange those materials that are non-proprietary on which there are no Patents have been claimed and no patents are likely to be claimed and which enable you to do your research um, and that have multiple uses in different experiments and which underpin all of basic research. An open MTA would actually make life very simple or simpler to deal with other labs because everyone would know what the conditions of a transfer would be and we'd all be in a sense singing from the same hymn sheet we wouldn't have to produce things on a bespoke basis. So I think an open MTA would actually really help the transfer of material. Open MTA retains many of the protections that a standard MTA has for the university that's distributing the material. For example, um, protection from liability and also the requirement that the recipient uses good laboratory practice. But it has some very important differences. Under an open MTA, you can use that material for commercial purposes, so companies are able to use, use the material for products, which is not possible under a standard MTA. You're also allowed to redistribute the material to other labs, and you can modify the material and redistribute that modification or, or build on it however you wish, and again, some MTAs restrict that. The main benefit of having the open MTA is to have the biggest number of institutions signing up for this and having the terms agreed, including recognition and attribution of the material. In that way, no revision will be needed, signing out will be so much quicker, and the most important thing is for the researchers to have their materials to carry on their work as soon as possible. This is what everybody wants. It's going to help unlock some of the wonderful innovation capacity that you see in scientists around the world. And when they start collaborating together and they start working together, you're going to get much more innovation, much greater social impact with engineering biology than we're going to have today.